Good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. I hope you have your coffee with you or whatever you drink in the morning. I've got my Bible in front of me as well. Um, we want to talk a little bit. I want to follow up about the, some of the things that um, uh, was, was said on Sunday morning when I was preaching. I just want to follow up in, in John's Gospel about Jesus being the truth. Um, so before we do that, I'd like to pray for us and for our community. So let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. I thank you for the day that you've given to us. We ask today, Lord, that you would lead us in your truth. We would ask that today as we uh, go about our business and the things that we do in our daily lives, that you would bring truth with us. And we would be able to share with our friends and family and those in our community who need uh, desperately to see truth and are seeking truth now, especially. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, people who are thinking about um, more significant truths than perhaps they've thought about in a long time. As we've put, as society has kind of stalled and um, a lot of people's lives are stalled right now, a lot of people are thinking about what really, what is truth? What is the truth for them? And so our prayers as a church, we want to be faithful during this time to pray for those people that they might find in you the truth. And help us, Father, to come into some relationship at this time to draw them into the truth that understands that Jesus has loved them and has died for their sins and wants to save them and wants to bring them into an eternal salvation where they, be, they might be born again into the family of God. Our humble prayer is this, in Jesus' name, amen. And so I wanted to, to revisit the, the sermon. Um, I watched the sermon. I never like to watch myself preach. I just... Uh, it's just one of those hard things. Um, but uh, as I was watching myself preach Sunday morning, I, I looked at myself and thought, what? I, I felt like I was being a little arrogant and preaching about addictions <clears throat> from a perch. I was pointing my finger and saying, uh, those people who are addicted or, or the, 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 the ones who are given to addiction, those kind of things. And that was being a little bit <clears throat> hypocritical I felt um, because I think the truth is, as we look at the, and we're talking about the truth, as we look at the truth, all of us, well, I can't say all, I mean, I, I, there may be a perfect person out there or perfect people out there. I've not met them. Uh, maybe I have met them and I haven't perceived their perfections. I don't know. <clears throat> but all, I think most all of us struggle with things um, that I would I would argue, fall into the category of addictions. Um, some people would, would use addiction as a clinical term that applies only to a certain, uh, a certain standard of, of struggle, life struggle. Uh, and yet, I feel like we all struggle with things that we can't stop doing. And to me, that's the nature of an addiction, that, that a person who does something <clears throat> over and over again and can't stop, whether it's it's lying, or whether it's anger, or lust, or alcoholism, cigarette smoking, uh, drugs, those kind, of, those kind of things. We we kind of taboo make taboo certain like drugs is a big taboo, and alcoholism that kind of thing. Um, and we make those things taboo, and yet there are those of us who can't stop eating certain foods. We just can't stop. Uh, we can't stop eating a certain amount of food. Um, dieting is so hard when we try to stop doing certain certain things. So I think there's a there's a range in the conversation about addictions that we all do well uh, to study the nature of addiction, the, the nature of the if you could say that the nature of the thing we can't stop doing. Um, there are certain sins that hook us. The Book of Hebrews calls it the sin, and this is King James Version, but the sin that so easily besets, that's the wording of the King James for uh, in the book of Hebrews, for the sin that hooks us, a uh, sin that so easily entangles us. It's the sin, and, and you know, you can probably think about it in your life, there are some sins that you, <clears throat> you, can, you can have no problem with. You know, I've never had a problem uh, not doing uh, crack. Never had a problem with that. Never been tempted to do it. Uh, I have victory. I have complete victory over the sin of not of, of doing crack. And but there are some sins 
that I don't have complete victory over. There's some sins I keep repetitively doing over and over. And to just ask uh, my wife, Sherry, or ask Emma, please don't ask them. Uh, I would like to keep those things secret from you. I'm just kidding. But there are things that um, I can't stop doing. And they will tell you, yeah, he does it over. That's what he does. That's what he, you know, and that kind of thing. So I want to, I want to, take control of my life and yet sometimes light the things of life control me and I, I feel like I'm underneath something and so uh, I think like again there's a range of uh, things you can't stop doing there's there's a range in the addiction uh, realm that I think that all of us can say well if, if we could just have a sliding bar of one to ten or whatever most of us would put us somewhere on the bar and say yes I'm a I'm a three I'm a five I'm an eight uh, that kind of a thing, and I, I, I you know, and, and the intense the measuring the intensity of the of the addiction. Um, and that being said, I wanted to to say reiterate something I said in the sermon, and kind of maybe simplify or clarify what I said, um, because I think it helps us understand why we can't stop doing things and how to deal with the things that we can't stop doing. Um, and that is, has to do with the two lies that the addict, all of us, say to ourselves, claim for ourselves in the midst of our addiction. And that is, <clears throat> uh, there are two lies. The first lie is, um, I can. The second lie is, I can't. And those come consecutively. The, in the early stages of, of an addiction, uh, people say, I can, and that's the lie. Uh, they tell themselves and tell others, I got this. I can stop this. I know I just got to grit my teeth and clench my fists and just bear down and I'm going to conquer this thing and I can stop it. And yet as the weeks, so as the weeks go by, that, tr that lie is exposed to us. I think God is uh, constantly trying to expose the truth to us and our addictions throughout our lives. In the early stages, he's saying, you can't, you can't stop doing this. You've tried it and you've tried it and you've tried it. You can't. And we keep lying to ourselves, I can't, I can't, I can't. And as long as we say that lie to ourselves, we'll never get to healing and we'll never get to victory because we're stuck in that first lie that says somehow in our flesh, and our worldly strength, we can overcome this thing. The truth we have to come to is that no, you can't. You, in, the, in the realm of the Alcoholics Anonymous, they, they, say, they use wording that say that you have to come to the truth that you are powerless to overcome this thing. And I think there's a great truth in that for us. So that's the first lie. It's early in the stages of addiction. The second lie is ironically just the opposite. Um, the first lie is I can. The second lie is I can't. Um, once you come, once we come to the uh, realization that we can't stop doing a certain thing, we um, <clears throat> we kind of sit sit in our addiction and throw sand over our head and sit in sackcloth and ashes and just, just kind of mourn, woe is me. And we finally collapse under the truth that we can't and that we're powerless and we cannot overcome something. We collapse under that truth and we just kind of sit there. And <clears throat> for those of us who come into Christianity and believe in a God of resurrection, believe in a God of power, Believe in a God who says, I am the truth. And if the truth sets you free, you will be free indeed. Those, tr those truths, uh, for those of us who have come into relationship with Jesus Christ, the second lie is just as damaging as the first lie. Because the second lie says that it's hopeless, I can't overcome this. And yet God says, as he sends his son to us, he, it's not just, he sends his son, he sends Jesus as a ransom for us, as a deliverer. And Jesus is a true deliverer, a real deliverer. It's not just fantasy. 
It's not just a great concept that God loves us so much. He loves us, yes, but he loves us into redemption. He loves us into salvation. And the truth that we have to claim first early in the early stages is that we can't do it. But the second truth that we have to claim in our addiction is that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And, and they're, both of those equal, those truths are, they're kind of progressive truths that we have to walk through our addiction to get to. And um, there's, there's verses in the scripture that say, I, I can do nothing. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do, do nothing. But then, but he also says, through me, you can do all things. Paul says, in Christ, I can do all things. So the, 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 the I guess the movement is, we admit we're helpless in and of ourselves. But when we admit it and we confess to God and come to God and say, I'm have, I have a sinner, I need to be redeemed. We have a God who is able to deliver us from everything and anything. And those are the true truths that we need to hold on to uh, today. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us as we continue to uh, investigate your truth I pray that my brothers and sisters who are watching this uh, will recommit themselves to a daily uh, study of your word because I really believe that it's in, the, it's in your word and your truth uh, that comes into our lives and overwhelms and overcomes and conquers the truths we tell ourse ourselves, the truths that we claim for ourselves, those truths that I think often are deceptions, lies, that we come to accept as our truth. Set us free from our truths by the grace and power of your Son, the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Until we see each other again, it'll be, uh, it'll be a, a blessing to be with you again soon.